Hey folks, so it's been a while since I've done a front end mentor challenge, but I recently saw that they'd released this pretty cool looking website. Um, it's a single page developer portfolio. It is a premium challenge. So if you want to build this yourself, you will have to use their pro subscription. I do highly recommend it. And they didn't pay me to say that. I just really like their platform. And the challenge comes with a Figma or sketch design, which is awesome because this is basically what you'd be getting access to in the real world from a designer. This website was really fun to build, but it definitely was kind of tricky in parts. I had some trouble with the hero section and these SVG elements that you have to make sure are positioned correctly and also make sure that they're responsive. And there's also some cool little hover states that we have going on here. I tried making them accessible so that even if we're just using a keyboard and tabbing through links, you can still get the overlay to work. And then down at the bottom, we have a contact form here with some validation styles, which are pretty cool also. So I have all the code for this up in GitHub. It's linked down in the description if you wanna take a look at that. All right, so let's get into this build. All right, so here is the front end mentor challenge. It's the single page developer portfolio. It is a premium challenge, so you will have to subscribe to front end mentors um, pro plan in order to have this design as well as getting the sketch and Figma design files. Um, I'm going to be working from the Figma design file, which I have open here. And let's just take a look at the design file before we get started. So the first frame is the design system. This is a pretty cool, very informative um, part of this design. So they're telling you the different colors as well as the font that they're using, um, space grotesque bold for the headlines, um, space grotesque medium for the regular body copy. And then these are just the different styles for the button as well as hover style. And then there's a contact form at the bottom of the page. And we're gonna be doing some validation to make sure the field is valid. And this is a style for that. So it's pretty cool. I think Front of Mentor definitely gives you a lot of really helpful information with their designs. Also, you might have noticed in Figma, Figma also will tell you the info about the text styles and the color styles. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so let's go move on to the next frame. This is the desktop design. So we have our header up at the top with the home link for the page, Adam Keys social media links up the top. And there's kind of like this hero section with text um, and with image, and then the link down to the contact form, which is at the bottom. Then we have this section here with different skills and then projects. So these are examples of the different projects in their portfolio. And then at the bottom, um, there's a contact form. And then there's a footer at the bottom, which has the same info as, yeah, up at the top. So yeah, this is a very cool minimal design. Um, you know, it's mainly this black color with there's some little SVG elements that kind of just give it a nice touch here. And also this circle here. Yeah, and this pattern kind of repeats. And then next up is the active states for the desktop design. So this is showing you that green color when you hover over the contact button. And then if you hover over one of the projects, it has this overlay with links for viewing the project. I'm assuming it'll be like a live demo of the website and then view code, which is probably linked to GitHub. You know, this is just a test demo site, so I'm not actually going to be linking all these different things, but if you wanna use this own project for your own portfolio website, then you can do that there. And then here again is the form validation that we'll be working on later at the end. And then the social media icon also has a hover state. This is a cool design. Here we got a tablet design, which is in my experience, at least going above and beyond. I don't think, I think I maybe have gotten a tablet design like three times in my entire career when I was working as a dev. Um, so it's very nice that they include that for you. So we can maybe see what the differences are between desktop and tablet. So it looks like the hero is the same. So on desktop, we have this sort of container. You can see the extra spaces on the left and the right. And then on tablet, it's kind of taking up 100% of the space with a little bit of padding on each side. And then mobile is also kind of the same. But for tablet, we still have this two column layout here with the text and the photo. Um, on mobile, it's just one column and centered. Whereas on tablet and desktop, everything is left aligned. And then the project section is similar where on tablet, it's two columns. Desktop, it's two columns. Obviously the images are smaller on tablet. 
and then a mobile stacks to one column. And then the contact form on desktop, there's this two column layout here, stacks to one column on tablet, and then it looks like tablet and mobile are very similar in terms of the one column. And then we have this the little SVG pattern thing again. So yeah, this is a really cool design. When I saw it come out, I thought it would be a fun project to do. So let's get started. So I have a folder that I created just for this project open in VS Code, and I have the starter files also open. So this is the index.html file that you get from Front of Mentor. And it just has, you know, boilerplate HTML and the different copy. So you don't have to copy and paste from the Figma file. And I'm guessing this is like a because there's a curly apostrophe. First things first, we want to maybe set up our styles. So I am going to, I'm going to do this in pure CSS. So I'm just going to create style.css. And then up here, I'm going to add it. And that should be right. I suppose I could put style in the assets folder, but I'm just going to keep it in the root. I don't think it matters a ton. Oh no, and when I saved it, I made everything in one line. Well, that's okay. That's prettier, I guess. <laughs> and let's also get this set up to load the live server for this website. All right, and that's our website. This is where we're starting. Um, what is this? Looks like it's some kind of Facebook thing. Um, oh, it's from a Mozilla extension. Okay. Uh, why is it not loading the style sheet? Okay, so first it's saying it can't load the favicon, so let's see what's going on here. Assets. Oh, I see, because it's in images. So let's do that. Okay. And we'll start writing our styles. So let's just add boilerplate styles here. Um, HTML box sizing border box and that's so padding doesn't add to the width or height of elements and then font size 100% to take the font size from the browser base font styles then I'll do a wildcard for all elements and before and after pseudo elements and they will inherit the box size from the HTML element then body I just want to zero out the margin because usually by default it will have some margin and we'll just leave it at that for now so let's check our website again and okay it looks like it does have these styles from style.css i don't know what extension that's from but i guess we'll try to ignore that actually i'm going to maybe disable that one second Okay, so the extension was the Facebook container extension, which I have installed on Firefox. So I've disabled that for now. Um, let's see how readable that is for all of you watching. I think that's reasonably readable. Oh, style sheet could not be loaded. Which one is that? Well, it looks like it is loading, so I don't know what's going on. Okay. Now the first thing we want to do is maybe start adding the markup here that we need. So let's go back to our design and um, let's see. Actually, maybe we should load our fonts as well as the colors. So the font is space grotesque bold. Um, Front of Mentor did actually include the font, the font files 
but I'm just going to use, I think, Google fonts for this, because I believe they're there. And it was called Space Grotesque. And we needed um, bold and medium. So add more styles. Oops, no, actually, I don't want this one. <laughs> um, How do I, okay, they said medium, which is 500, and then bold, 700. And I'm just going to copy these. And put it in the head. All right, cool. Then we need to copy what it needs to be called in CSS. So font family space grotesque. Um, okay, so now let's see if that worked. Um, all right, and the font has changed. Let's see how big this is. It's probably 16 pixels. Okay, next up I want to, I think, copy the colors. So I think I'm going to maybe save them to CSS custom properties. So we got black. It's going to copy the hex code. And to set the CSS custom properties, I will set them here. So black. And then I'll change it. I'll change them to HSL later. And then we have this green color, or I guess dark gray. Let's copy that. Green. Gray. And white. Um, and I think there's also, if we select that frame, yeah, this red color here. And that's for the invalid. We'll just say red. Okay. Cool. And I might actually rename the variables to match what their function is in the website. Um, so I believe this black is um, just the background color. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, so I'll say background color for that. I don't think it's used anywhere else. We can always change it if we need to. Um, so I'm gonna rename this background. And then the dark gray.
Oh, the contact form is a dark gray color. Oh yeah, it is. Okay. So we would say body BG and then contact BG. Or maybe BG body. Okay. And then green is just like accent. We'll name the red invalid. And the gray and the white colors. Let's see where those are being used. Twenty-four items using it. This looks like it's being used for text. So let's say the white is going to be the main text, and we'll say gray is it text too. So I'm going to actually move this under white. Um, and I guess that's all the colors. So this is a very minimal, definitely a very minimal design. Okay. Um, so let's start adding some global styles. background color and then color will be we'll just say white so text one and then I was going to change these to HSL it doesn't matter a ton but it just I think HSL is considered better practice because it's easier to change like the darkness and lightness of it versus hex You'd have to like, you know, do some kind of color lookup or use a SAS function or something. Okay. Let's check out our website. Okay. So now we got this going. Um, So now I'm going to add maybe some styles for the text. So for the body, it says 18 pixels and 28 pixels line height. So I'm going to add that to the body. Font size, 18 pixels. And then line height is, um, what was it, 28 divided by 18, 1.56. I like using ratios just because if we ever change this, then um, if we ever change the font size, it will be, the line height will kind of change with it. So that's kind of nice. And we should use rams. Um, so I am going to pull out the calculator. Normally if I would use SAS, we would just be using a SAS function to convert. So 18 pixels divided by 16, because 16 pixels is the default base browser font size. So 1.125. Um, and actually, what we could do is maybe font size body, make these variables. So one point one two five rems, and then we can do this. Just make sure that works. Okay. 
Um, font size should be 1.125 grams. Oh, well, looks like it is working. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so that's good. Um, is the body text the same size for desktop and tablet and mobile? Looks like it is. Um, okay, why can't I see the... Oh, I see. This is fancy. Okay, so it is 18 pixels for everything it looks like. Which is probably good, because you don't want font size to get too small for mobile. Um, looks like the header on these is also the same size. Okay, so we don't need to worry about this is a bit smaller. AG heading XL. Seventy two. Yeah, there we go. So seventy two. And then on mobile, it is forty. I don't know if that was included in the design. So this is 88 on desktop, 48 large, 88 XL, 48 large, 24 medium. Which is a little different than what is here. So that is using Excel. This is Excel. Um, 72. So that's different. 72 and then 40. So I think... Um, this different sizes are just for the desktop design, perhaps. Oh my gosh. Yeah, heading large. And then... Heading medium. Okay. Looks like the heading medium doesn't change size. But the heading large is due. So... I think maybe we will... have to figure that out. I might use a clamp function for like these since they do change. This changes too. Um, okay. So let's just add maybe our styles for the H1 tag. I think actually what I saw someone do was um, something like this, like this font size 18. <laughs> um, to convert it. So then you know it's 18 pixels, but then it gets converted here. So let's just do something like that. So we can at least know that the numbers are saved. So it's 88. And I'm just gonna add the names for now. 48, 24.
Then at least I won't have to do the math every time. 5.5. Oops. 48. 24. And then I'm going to go back into Figma and get the different font sizes for mobile and tablet. So this is Excel on desktop. 72 for tablet. Four point five. And then on mobile, it turns into 40. I think that's okay for now. Um, okay. What else is there? Oh, these headings were a bit different. So this is large, which is Um, 48. And then tablet, it's the same. Large. And then on mobile, it is different. Uh, 32. I should probably know that not enough mental math for that, but <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Let's check the contact one too. Excel. Let's see if it's the same, if they change the same amount. 72, I think that's right. And then 40, which I do think I did. Okay. So I think we can use the same font sizing for both of those. So projects and then contact. And in the HTML, those would B H two tags. And looks like Excel also Excel. Forty seventy two. Okay. So the font sizes are consistent, which is good. Okay, so let's start by, I just kind of go from the top to the bottom, honestly. Um, so maybe the first thing I want to do is create a container class. So this, by that I mean, um, I, you don't want your content to go greater than a certain amount. Let's see if there's, oh, there's a layout grid, perfect. Looks like this is about, so 1,110 is the their container class size. Okay, I guess I don't need this. Okay. 
So I'm going to add a new class container, um, or I guess wrapper, um, cause CSS has container queries that they're adding. So maybe we'll try to name things that don't conflict. So wrapper, this is supposed to be hundred. 1110 pixels. Um, but one thing you can do is um, use the minimum function and set it to 100% minus. And I'll show you what I'm trying to do here. Um, Trying to see how much space there is. 18, 16 pixels for mobile, 30 pixels for tablet. Hmm. So I think what I need to do is set this to 100%, set a max width to 110 pixels. Um, and we'll just create another variable for this. Divided by 16, 69.375. And I use rams instead of pixels because it's more accessible when users change the browser's base font size. So that's why I'm kind of doing this. And we want to center it on larger viewport widths. So margin inline, which will set the margin inline start and margin inline end, which in most places, if you are using a left to right direction, will be left and right margins. So set those to auto to center. And what I might actually do is create a media query for this so that um, the width will change. So example for mobile, it should actually be 100% minus, I think the spacing was 18. Sixteen. 16 and then 30. So for mobile, which we're going to use as the default styles, calc 100% minus um, 16 pixels is one rem, and then there's going to be one rem of margin on each side, so two rems. There we go. And let me just make sure this works. From mobile. Oh yeah, I need to actually add it. So I'm just gonna start adding some stuff. Class of header. And then main. Um, ID of main. And then there's going to be footer. So I'm going to add a div with the container class. Oops. or I'm sorry, wrapper class. And then I think that was an H1 tag.
Okay, so it is just for this top part, adding the margins. So 16 pixels on each side, which is what we want. Um, and then I need to change that to be 30 pixels for tablet. So I'm going to have to add a media query. So the mobile media query is 375. Tablet is 768. Um, and unfortunately, you can't use CSS custom properties with media queries. So we'll just have to set a breakpoint and just try to keep them consistent. So this is going to be our mobile styles. And then I'm going to add media min width. So once it passes a certain width, um, and it's going to be somewhere between mobile, which is 375, and tablet, which is 768. So maybe I think people use, you know, maybe we can say 600. And with media queries, you should use EMs. And that's just for different reasons. Um, It's better for accessibility because using pixels in your media queries will make the breakpoints happen at a certain different times that you may not want them to um, if you change the browser based font size. Um, and I'm just going to add this in here just to remember. So this is going to be for the tablet, tablet style. So once the viewport is greater than 600, which you will get on tablet, it will use these styles. So we're going to do this update width. Oh, and I forgot I'm not using um, SAS. So we have to have the media query and then inside have these selectors with their styles. And then 30 pixels on each side for tablet. So that's 60. 60 divided by 16 is 3.75 rems. And then for desktop, um, I can't remember what we want to do for that. Okay, so, and we're again just looking at the margins here. Click the highlight button so it stays on. All right, so we got this. So now it's changed to 30 on the tablet. And eventually I think, okay, so it is maxed out at 1110 for the content for desktop, which is good. Okay. Yeah, and you can see for larger viewport widths, the margin starts getting bigger just because all the extra space. Okay, so I think that is a good way of doing this. Yeah, one thing I do like about SAS versus pure CSS is you can add the media queries inside the selector. Um, so just it keeps things a bit neater in my opinion, but you know, pure CSS works too. Okay. So we got the container stuff figured out. Um, I'm going to start by just kind of moving things into this header area here. And there's going to be hero section here. Um, and it looks like the picture has that sort of not quite as dark gray background. Um, let's see what we got in the images folder here. 
Okay, this looks like the gray is kind of included. Looks like there's a little bit of um, opacity going on, but it's solid for desktop and tablet. And then mobile has the opacity. So let's just see why that is. Okay, because it's like, this is the image, and then you're just kind of putting the name and the logos there. Okay. But then for tablet, it's kind of stuck to the top right corner. Um, and it's outside that margin, so we'll just have to make sure we do that. Then for desktop, it's kind of stuck to the top also. So, yeah, let's just start adding the markup. So this is going to be a link to the home page. And I guess it should be in a nav element too. Oops. Yeah. There we go. And then we'll make a, I guess this is good. It's not like navigation. These are really just social links. So I guess usually you put nav links in an unordered list, but I'm not sure if this is necessary for this because it's not like navigation. So I think maybe I'll just add them as links. Yeah, we'll just do regular links. Um, we'll just have them as blank. And the first one is GitHub. So it's probably that one. And with the links you, or with images, you usually want to set the width and height. So 24.61 and 24. And we want alt text because it's an image. So I'll duplicate that. And the next one is um, front of mentor. And the size of that is 24.6 and 22. And after that is LinkedIn. And that size is 24 by 24. And it's good to include width and height attributes because then the browser will know what the aspect ratio is. So this is more applicable for like bigger images that will take up a lot of vertical real estate on the page. Um, but if you include the width and height, the browser will know kind of how much space to leave in the website when the image is, while the image is loading so that you don't have this weird flash of content. So that's why it's generally good to do that. And then Twitter. Um, Twitter is 23.28. We'll just copy these. 18.93. see how this looks. All right, icons look good. And then obviously we need to style that. 
So let's check the font size of this since it's just text. Um, 32 pixels on desktop. Yeah. There we go, 32 on tablet and 24 on mobile. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe um, so I think what I'm going to do is maybe use a clamp function just for the heck of it. And the selector I want to use is let's say header, or I guess nav a, maybe I should add a class. Um, header home. And I am still going to sort of use like the BEM stuff. It'll just be a bit different here. Um, and I'll try to use comments. Header. Um, and we'll probably have other styles for the header, so we'll do that too. And font size, what we want to do is, so again, it was 24 on mobile, 32 on tablet, and um, desktop. So what I like to do is, there's this really cool link, fluid typography calculator and it's this one on the github page so minimum font size was um 22 i think i'm losing my memory 24 24 pixels minimum or max font size was 32 pixels minimum viewport was 375 for mobile and the max viewport is when we want it to hit the max font size so you we'll, we'll use a tablet one for that which is 768. And then calculates a clamp function that you can use. So we'll set that to here. And I'm going to remove, kind of round up or round down the numbers. So this will be 2.04. Oops. And let's just see if that worked. Okay, and I need to set it to white. <laughs> um, color var. I think it's just the body, right? No, no, that's background. Uh, text one. And I think we don't want the underline, so text decoration none. Okay, so now, um, let's filter for font size. You can see it's 32. And you can follow here, it's getting smaller as the viewport gets smaller. And then the minimum is 24 pixels. So the clamp function's nice. It saves you not having to write a media query all the time. Um, I mainly use it for font sizes. And I think we just maybe want to add some hover state stuff. I'm just assuming since in the footer, hovering over it made it green, I'm going to do the same thing for both the text and the icons. So what I might do is add it to the global styles, which we will make a little comment here just to keep things a bit organized um, since everything's going to be in this one long CSS file. So I'm going to add, um, Or maybe just anchor. Oh, 
hover color var accent. Yay. Oh yeah, the SVGs need to change. Um, since they're changing colors, I think I'm going to have to do inline SVGs instead of the images. So GitHub, we will copy this. And let's just do a test with this one first. It's really long. Um, I don't know why they do it. It's so weird. Okay, I don't know. Hopefully this is, there we go, valid. <laughs> So right now it says the fill is FFF, which is white. Um, so I think what you can do is for SVGs that are hovered. Um, I think this should work. Uh, let's try in the browser first. Okay, so. What I want to do is path fill. There we go. Okay. So what I need to do is basically we're treating this like an HTML in terms of the selector. So SVG hover path fill and this should work. And it works. And there's some weird line there. Why is that? Mm. Okay, because I think display in line just kind of adds space because it assumes it's text. It looks like it is working. So if I hover over this. Yeah, I need to change that selector to a, oops. I think it's because maybe it's display inline. Inline. Yeah, so in display inline, it just assumes it's text, so it's going to add a space between elements. So if you want to get rid of that, you may want to set it to inline block. Not sure if this is a good idea, but let's see. Hopefully, it doesn't cause any issues. We'll see. Um, okay, so we got the GitHub icon. So now we need to do the same thing for 
in front of Mentor. And then LinkedIn. And Twitter. Maybe I'll add a class to the anchor links too. Um, header social. So it'll make these selectors a little bit easier. So oops. Header underscore underscore social. Maybe we'll just do it here too. Um just so just in case this might mess up other elements on the web page. Okay, so now, yep, woohoo. So yeah, this is this is when I would use um, inline SVGs. And the only question I have is, um, these are still technically, I mean, these are images and I don't think there's alt text for SVGs, but we want to be accessible if possible. Um, so let's see what CSS tricks has to say. Okay. It's a bit old it's from 2016, but it might still work. Um, Okay, inline SVG. Okay, so it looks like you can add a title inside the SVG. I don't know if I did it here, but. Okay, so it's saying, oh, let's read the spec. This is the w3c.org, um, which has all these specifications for web stuff. Um, so it's very dense, but it is informative. So I do try to read this when I can, if I need to find out what like recommended best practices. Um, okay, each container element, no, 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 can supply a desk or a title, or the description is text only. Okay, so it looks like this might be good. And then it was also saying something about add aria labeled by. And then add role image. I'm not familiar with this. Okay, content should be considered a single image. I'm not a accessibility expert by any means, but
Okay, this, this actually makes a lot of sense. If you're using embedded SVGs or inline SVGs in your page, it's a good idea to set role equals image on the outer SVG element and then give it a label. This will cause screeners to consider it as a single entity and describe it using a label rather than trying to read out all the child nodes because, you know, SVGs can be very complicated. These are quite simple, but on that other example that we were looking at of the cat image, you know, you don't want the screen reader to read every single thing here. Um, so adding role image will sort of make it understand that it's one, all those elements are just one image. So let's try that method. So role image and then you can try this aria label too. Um, I guess we can try all of these and just see. What works. Mm. This is a oh, slightly old, so. Let's try the title field um, or title element for this. So go to the first one, um, GitHub. Inspect that and okay, so title doesn't show up visually on the page. So maybe we'll just follow these things. So we don't need a long description, so I don't think we need this description tag. And then maybe aria labeled by. Oh yeah, we need to add a unique title ID to the title. Um, social GitHub. And then on the SVG tag, we'll add aria labeled by and then put the title ID. And then role equals image. There we go. So let's see how that looks. Okay. Um, it seems like role image is one of the most important things, just so it it doesn't get stuck trying to read every element and then adding the title and then the aria label is so it can read out what the svg is about so that seems good um uh, let's try doing that for the other stuff so let's copy this and add it to the next svg element and this is going to be um, I don't remember what this is. Um, for a mentor. And then in the SVG title. Okay, we'll do the same thing for the other ones. Social um, LinkedIn. Copy that, add a title. Oops, ID. 
linked in. Okay. And the last one was Twitter. Okay. So, yeah, I do try to make the website accessible as much as I can. Um, I'm not an expert, as I said, but, you know, there's different resources that you can use. Um, one that I use a lot, actually, is the accessibilitydeveloperguide.com. Um, and they have some really helpful um, examples that I use, as well as doing things like screen, screen reader only visible elements, where we'll be adding some of these actually. Um, so like, for example, let's close this. For example, um, screen readers will use the headings in a website to navigate through sections. So it's really helpful to make sure that you are using the proper HTML semantic tags, especially headings, um, so that screen readers can more easily navigate through the page. So um, you might sometimes need to add hidden headings that are only going to be readable by screen, screen readers, if I can talk. So for example, the skills section, there's no skills headline, but I will probably add a visually hidden um, skills heading here, just so screen, screen readers can see it more easily. So things like that. You can also add a hidden headline to say header for the header part, um, and then also the footer for the footer part. So yeah, just different ways that you can try to make the website that you're using more um, navigable by people who are using screen readers, or you know, some people navigate just by the keyboard if they don't have a mouse or can't use it for whatever reason. Um, so yeah, it's just something that I try to keep in mind. Okay. So <laughs> we got the header links added. Um, we do have this hover state going, but I might try to make it a bit nicer by adding a transition and let's see a hover. So we're changing the color. Um, so what I'm going to do is transition color and then maybe just say 200 milli, 250 milliseconds. And then I like ease in and out. So now So now the text has this nice hover animation. Uh, we need to add the same thing for those. And what I could do is add this to a CSS custom property. So I can use, make sure that I have the same speed and everything. Um, might do this, so then we can control the property. This should work. Let's just test that. Yeah. And now we can do the same thing for the um, ones here. So what I want to do is I'll have to use this same Selector path, so header social, not hover, SVG path, um, transition, fill. Oops. And I think it'll work. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. Pretty good. Cool. Um, I feel like there's something I could do here to make this um, say home if you're using a screen reader. Um, just because I was reading recently that for people who are actually using screen screen readers to navigate, they it helps a lot to look for the home link. 
Um, so let's see what they do here. You can see this has a roll image too, so it's kind of cool. EVG logo. Oh, interesting. To homepage. So that's cool. So I'm guessing the screen reader will read this out. Um, so maybe we'll add that inside our link here. And this is for the home. Here we go. And we'll need to add styles for this, which they do tell you how to do. And they give you some CSS code. So what this is doing is it's setting the element to position absolute and then making it just basically off the page and setting the width and height to one pixel. If you set it, if you set the size to zero pixels, then it'll just be completely hidden from screen readers as well. So we don't want that. So we'll just copy those styles. Um, I think I want to move these header styles. See, it's already getting disorganized. This is why I like SAS because um, you can break things. This is why I like SAS because you can break your styles out into different SAS partials. So you just have multiple files as opposed to, you know, having to scroll up and down, which, you know, I guess can work too, but. I, for me, at least, um, I think SAS, the benefit of SAS is uh, helping with the organizational part of things. Okay, so we got that. Now let's check our website again. Um, looks like this is not working. Oh, it's different. Um, there's a dash there, so there we go. And now it is hidden. So if we try to inspect it, I can see the span is like way off the page. So yeah, if you haven't really done accessibility stuff, I could see it being kind of difficult, um, but it is something that's pretty important. Um, from what I've read, I would say the most important thing to have is just to make sure your HTML is using semantic tags whenever you can, like the h1, h2, h3 headers. Um, and I think just that will help with um, navigation. And then having these screen reader only elements will also help um, people to navigate. So it's a lot, but I do think it's important. So I try to do that. Um, okay. And it looks like we need to add the uh, container class in here too. Or sorry, wrapper, wrapper class. I'm like so used to using container that I uh, keep forgetting. Okay, there we go. So now we have the space here. All right, so the next thing we want to do is for the header links um, on desktop, they're going to be text on the left and then all the social icons on the right. For tablet, it's the same. And then for mobile, we have them centered. So let's see what we want to do here. Um, I'm kind of inclined to use Flexbox. Um, obviously, you can use grid as well. Um, maybe I'll use grid. 
you could use either, honestly. Um, okay, let's let's try flex. So I'm gonna make this a flex row for desktop. Um, but maybe first we'll do the mobile style so that it's centered like that. So what we can do is um, we just kind of minimize these, or maybe just the SVG. Um, so these are the links, and we want this to be a flex parent. So maybe I'll do header nav just to kind of keep our BEM style. So in the header, um, let's see, we'll add this first because it comes first. And this is going to be display flex. And for mobile, um, I think what we'll do is here, let's see what we got first. So header nav display is flex. So it's fitting everything on one line. Um, so I'm turning on the flex inspector thing. Um, what I want to do is for the first link, I'm going to set flex to, oops, um, let it flex one for, so we'll set flex grow to one and flex shrink will be zero because I don't want it to shrink. Flex spaces will be 100%. Oh, and we need to turn on wrap on the flex parent. Wrap, there we go. So now you can see by default, it'll try to fit it on one row, but because I'm manually setting this to be um, a flex spaces, which is the sort of initial width um, of 100%, then this is going to Put it on its own row. So let's copy those styles that we have right now. So flex wrap for the parent. It's no wrap by default. And then header home. We want this to be flex. So we want it to grow, so we set that to one. Flex is a shorthand property for flex grow. Flex shrink and flex basis. Sorry. Um, okay, so now we got things on the lines. And I think if I just set, I think maybe I might have to do text align center. Mm, justify items center. Okay, just why I'm just for grid. I'm not sure why it's not centering. Oh, that was working. Okay. Um, <laughs> not sure what was happening earlier, but maybe I was adding it in the header home selector for some reason. There we go. So now everything's centered. Um, and let's figure out how we want to add the space between the social links as well as the text in the social. 
So between them, there's 20 pixels of space between the text and the icons. And then between the icons, it's 25. Okay, so what we can do is, I think you can do this on Flexbox now, um, gap. And the first one is gonna be row gap, I believe, and that was 20 pixels. And then the column gap between columns was 25 pixels. And I'll convert that later once we know it's correct. Sweet, so now you can see we got space between the items. It looks pretty good. Um, so I did read this blog post by Josh Como, who's a really good um, developer with uh, JavaScript and React and CSS. Um, he actually has a core CSS for JavaScript developers, but he made this cool blog post about how he actually uses pixels for some of these smaller measurements um, in the web because usually use rems so that they'll scale up as you change your browser base font size to be up as well. Um, but if you do that for things like padding, then when the browser base font size is really big, it will sort of, the padding starts taking up more space that you might prefer to have with, prefer to be taken up by the text just for readability. Um, so you kind of have to think about, you know, what, what do you want this space to do? Like, if things get bigger, we might actually want to keep the space 25 and 20 pixels, um, even if the base font size changes, just so that, you know, you don't sort of run out of real estate. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but I think maybe it might be better to keep this gap as pixels versus rims. Okay, so let's also figure out the space above the text logo here. It's 20 pixels. Um, so I think what I might do is Maybe I will just add a margin top of 20 to the header. Okay, and yeah, let's try that. And again, I'm gonna leave that as pixels since you know I don't necessarily want it to scale up. Um, so I would say rems are the most important for text because you definitely want the text to scale up as your browser-based font size changes. Um, and then maybe for some margins, um, you might want it to scale up as well. But I think it's okay to keep this as pixels. Okay, so I think that's good for the mobile styles. Um, we'll see how this changes for tablet. So this is where the flex layout changes. So the flex styles are here. Um, and then obviously here for that home link. So I could either create a media query for each selector, but maybe I'll have one media query for each section. Um, so let's do this. And maybe I'll just copy what we had here. And then in here, we'll change the header nav flex styles. And then we'll have to change the header home flex stuff as well. So header nav. Um, I guess it doesn't, I think we can get away with not having to change flex wrap back to no wrap. Um, so maybe we actually just need to change the justify content and text align. So 
So default is going to be flex start, which will be the left side in our case. And then text line will be left. And then the header home, we don't want it to be this anymore. Um, let's see what, so design is this. So maybe we'll allow it to grow. If, a, if I set flex one, this will end up being in the browser at one zero zero percent, I believe. Um, so I just will say flex one to allow it to grow if need be. And then one way you can make it all the way on the left is to set the margin right to auto. So let's try that. Although I think since we're using margin inline for things nowadays, um, inline end might be better just to keep things consistent. Okay, so let's see if this worked. Ooh, look at that. So we'd center on mobile, and then once we hit the tablet, obviously this is not exactly what we want it to look like. Um, text line center. Wait, where'd this come from? There we go. This refreshing thing is a bit weird. Um, okay, we need to center that vertically too. So we can set that on the flex parent with line items center. Um, I think that's vertically centered. The icons look like they have a little bit of extra space on the bottom. Oh yeah, look at that. There's extra space. I think that's because by default, anchor links are display inline and the browser is going to add a tiny bit of space at the bottom because when you have usually display inline elements are text and some letters have descenders like, you know, the letter Y, lowercase Y, lowercase P, G, etc. So I think we want to set those to inline block maybe. Or block, I think it doesn't matter since we're going to be using Flexbox anyway. But let's do inline block. Um, and what selector do we need for these header social? Uh, hmm. Maybe inline block still has the um, descenders. Let's try display block. <laughs> I wonder if it's because there's I added a line break when I put the markup in here. Let's try that. This is so stupid of it. This is going to be why. Get rid of the spaces. Nope, still there. Mm. Are the measurements wrong? No, with this 25. I'm very confused right now. Okay, it doesn't look like there's white space because usually Firefox will tell you when there's white space. Hmm. Let me switch out this inline SVG for the image tag version. I don't know if it'll change anything, but. Comment this out. Oops. Uh, what was the first one again? <clears throat> um, GitHub. And then we'll just do this for now. Mm. 
No, it's still adding that space. Okay, so at least we know that's not the cause. I do feel like it might be actually, sorry, let's try again, but let's get rid of the any white space. Let's see if that does anything. Yeah. Try refreshing. Nope. Okay, so it's definitely not due to using an inline SVG. It's gonna undo that. Okay. Um, <laughs> why? Okay. While we're testing this, um, let's add a outline. And I use outline instead of border because border will actually add to the size of the element, but outline will not. So, okay, CSS um, anchor or link has extra tiny space on the bottom. Maybe anchor. Hmm. This is very strange. Wait. I wonder if it's a flexbox thing. If I remove flexbox, there's still that space at the bottom. So it's not a flexbox thing. Um, I don't understand. If I end up stuck on this problem for like an hour, I'm going to be very sad. Let's try a text link. Test. Also, I just realized the descender thing. I think it gets removed anyway if the link is like a if a link is um, a flex child. So the descender thing probably is not causing anything. This is so weird. I wonder if the SVG is somehow. Oh my gosh, it's SVG not being display block. 
I knew that happened with images, but it was weird that it didn't show up, but I guess that makes sense because the descender doesn't show up in like the box model stuff. Okay, that was annoying. Well, at least I figured it out. <laughs> um, so header socials, the anchor tag, and then the SVG. I wonder if I just do this, if the anchor tag not having it will be okay. Now they both need it. This is so crazy. There we go. Wait. Uh, what? Oh, here we go. Okay, so inline block still has room for descenders because it'll still try to display them. It'll the browser will still try to display inline block elements next to each other when there's room. So so now let's see if just the SVG will fix this. Okay, now that's good enough for me. Um, okay, so where were we <laughs> before all of this? So now we have everything nicely vertically aligned. We have the home element here on the left. Yep, nice. And then on desktop, it'll go wide. Cool. Maybe we'll zoom out. Well, no, let's just leave it. Okay. Um, let's check the spacing between the elements on desktop too. It's probably the same. Yeah, it's 32. Let's just check. Um, Layout, a flex container. It's unfortunate that Firefox doesn't tell you the gap property like in the thing here somewhere. Yeah, it's fine. We can look at the rules. Oh, it was 25 pixels. So I think we might need to change the gap for the tablet and um, desktop. Twenty-five and then twenty. Twenty-five between icons. And then here it's thirty-two. So we'll change. The gap property on header nav to 32. And I guess we can just use it for both row and column. It doesn't really matter because there's only one row of items. Line height is one, so 32. Line height is 32 pixels, which is the same as the font size. So we actually want to change this line height to one. Yeah. I like adding line height after the font size. Cool. All right, so that's the header. And then next up, we'll add, we'll work on the hero stuff. <laughs> 